Are you going to make less or fewer grammar mistakes after hearing this episode? There's only one way to find out. Grammar Girl here. I'm Mignon Fogarty, and you can think of me as your friendly guide to the English language. We talk about writing, history, rules, and other cool stuff. This week, I'll help you figure out when to use less and when to use fewer, even in the tricky cases. And then we'll look at where we get all the fun names for our different fingers. Let's get started. If you want a simple rule, the difference between less and fewer is straightforward. The traditional advice is that fewer is for things you can count, and less is for things you don't count. So you can count M&Ms, glasses of water, and potatoes. So maybe you eat fewer M&Ms, serve fewer glasses of water, and buy fewer potatoes for the salad. But you can't count candy, water, or potato salad. So you eat less candy, observe that the lake has less water, and make less potato salad for the next potluck. As I said, that's the simple rule, and the one you'll hear most often. But another way to think about the difference that also takes care of some of the exceptions to the simple rule is to use less for singular nouns and fewer for plural nouns. The Chicago Manual of Style recommends using the singular or plural framework, as do I. For the easy nouns, it works the same way. Candy is singular, and you use less, less candy. And M&Ms is plural, and you use fewer, fewer M&Ms. Time, money, distance, and weight are often listed as exceptions to the traditional can-you-count-it rule, because you can count them, but they take less. And when you use the singular or plural rule, time, money, distance, and weight all fall in line. They aren't exceptions anymore. They fit into the rule. For example, although $1,000 is certainly countable, a bank teller will do it for you gladly, we routinely ignore that fact and think of it as a singular amount. We don't care about each individual dollar. We care about the singular total, as we do with each of the other items in this category. He believes $1,000 is a lot of money. She says 50 miles is a long drive for ice cream. We think 12 hours is too much time to spend on the road. They're singular, and they take less. He had less than $1,000 in the bank. We're less than 50 miles away, and we could fly to London in less than 12 hours. Using the singular or plural rule also explains another instance that's often called an exception to the simple rule. People often think phrases such as one less banana are wrong because you can count bananas. But one less banana is correct because it's singular and you use less with singular nouns. One less banana and similar phrases put you in a tricky situation because they're correct, but many people think they're wrong. For example, I got grammar-related complaints after Gardasil launched its One Less Person Affected with HPV ads because many people thought it was grammatically incorrect. So I recommend avoiding the construction whenever possible. It's better to rewrite your sentences than to have people think you've made a mistake and better than knowingly using the wrong word by writing one fewer X. You really can't win whether you write one less banana or one fewer banana, so rewrite. Instead of telling your caterer we need one less banana in the fruit bowl, avoid the controversial sentence by saying, take one banana out of the fruit bowl. Now, I know some of you are also wondering about those ubiquitous grocery store signs that read 10 items or less. Well, they aren't the clear-cut abomination that many people believe them to be. Although Garner's Modern English Usage says 10 items or fewer is the correct choice, other reference books, such as Merriam-Webster's Dictionary of English Usage and the Cambridge Guide to English Usage, note that the admonition that writers should not use less for countable items is relatively new, beginning as the personal opinion of one usage writer from the 1700s. 
and the Oxford English Dictionary has examples of less being used with countable items going back to nearly the dawn of printed English and continuing to this day. I find it impressive that the first citation of less being used with a countable noun in the OED comes from King Alfred the Great himself. He was the great promoter of English over Latin, and in the year 888, he wrote about less words. Now, language researchers tend to believe that using less with some countable nouns is natural, and that the restriction against doing so is constructed and forced. For example, Mark Liberman reported on the linguistics site Language Log that in real writing, both from Google News and the web in general, instances of N votes or less far exceeded N votes or fewer, with N referring to any number. The words much and many also reveal something about our grocery store signs. They're a lot like less and fewer. Much is generally used for things you can't count, and many is used for things you can count. But it's equally acceptable at the grocery store to ask both, how much can I bring through this line? Is this too much? And how many can I bring through this line? To me, how much questions sound more natural, which would imply that we think of our items on the conveyor belt as a single uncountable mass of groceries rather than countable items. But you can make an argument for either. What I ask is not that you use 10 items or less in your own writing. It carries even more risk than using the one less banana construction. What I ask is that the next time you see a sign that reads 10 items or less, Instead of getting upset about the sign, recognize that this isn't a black and white issue and save your anger for something about which we can all agree. The people who go through that line with 40 items, they should be stopped. Have you ever wondered why our fingers have the names they do and how much they play a part in our colloquial language? Well, our fingers have lots of names, both common and medical, and even more idioms that include these names. As humans, our fingers are so unique that we've taken to naming them and using them in many common expressions. So let's give a hand to our fingers. First is the thumb, which is typically known as the first digit. Thumb comes from the Old English word thuma, from a Proto-Germanic root meaning thick or stout. Incidentally, some people insist on calling the thumb a digit rather than a finger, but it is typically known as a finger by the medical community, according to the Medical Today website. But however you refer to it, thumb is really the only common name for it. Other medical terms for the thumb from Latin are pollux, spelled with either an E or a U before the X, which comes from a verb meaning to be strong, and digitus primus manus. Idiomatic expressions in English that use thumb are plentiful and colorful. You've probably heard the expression to have a green thumb, which means having a knack for gardening or taking care of plants. The opposite being a black thumb. Or thumbs up, which is a common verbal and physical sign of approval. And then there's under your thumb, or having something under your control or influence. And to be all thumbs, meaning to be klutzy or clumsy, (laughs) guilty as charged. One expression, rule of thumb, has sparked much controversy. Merriam-Webster defines it as a method of procedure based on experience and common sense or a general principle regarded as more or less but not necessarily completely accurate. Some people believe that it came from an old British law that allows a husband to beat his wife with an object not thicker than his thumb. However, this story has been strongly refuted by etymologists, those who study the origins of words. According to Dave Wilton of the Word Origins site, rule of thumb, which actually uses thumb as a unit of measurement, dates back to 15th century Scotland. According to his website, the use of thumb in this context, quote, stems from the fact that the distance between the tip of a person's thumb and the first knuckle is more or less one inch in length, and the thumb can therefore be used to give a rough estimate of an object's length, unquote. 
And an interesting note, the words for thumb and inch are the same in many languages, including pulgada in Spanish, palitz in Czech, dumb in Dutch, and pus in French. Second, we have the index finger, commonly known as the pointer, index, first, trigger, or forefinger, or digitus secundosa in medical terms. According to the JSTOR Daily website, index comes from an Old English word meaning to show, which makes sense since many names for this finger have to do with pointing, hence pointer finger. Quote, in Anglo-Saxon times, it was known as the scythe finger for reasons that are murky and as the shooting finger, because it was used to draw back a bowstring, unquote. With the advent of modern weapons, the now common term trigger finger makes sense. Perhaps one of the most amusing nicknames for this finger, according to JSTOR, is potlicker, given how we love to scoop up sauce with it, or in my case, queso, a nickname after my own heart. Next up, the middle finger, also known as the long, tall, halfway, and third finger. Its central position in the hand is the obvious reason for its most common name, middle finger. Because of its length in relation to its neighbors, this finger also has received fun but less common nicknames like the high grass and the tall turk. Now, the middle finger has a bad reputation because it is infamously used in a vulgar and offensive gesture to show our disdain for something or someone. According to the Strong Language blog, this gesture actually dates back to ancient Rome and maybe even ancient Greece, and was known in Latin as the digitus impudicos, or obscenosa, the shameless or lewd finger. It's worth noting that this gesture is considered offensive in many cultures, so be careful. Colloquial expressions for this crude gesture include to give someone the middle finger, or just to give someone the finger, to flip someone off, or to give the one-finger salute. The origin of another term for this gesture, to flip someone the bird, is unclear, but the earliest recorded use is from 1967 in Broadside Magazine, according to the Idiom website. Now on to the very symbolic ring finger, also known as the fourth finger. According to several sources, the term ring finger goes all the way back to second century Egypt and has to do with the heart and love. This is why we typically wear engagement and wedding rings on this finger, although whether you wear them on the right or left hand depends on which country you live in. The ring finger has also been linked to medicine. Ancient Egyptians, and later the Romans, believed there was a vein in the fourth finger connected to the heart, called the lover's vein. This theory, although false, led this finger to be linked to medical terminology. According to JSTOR Daily, quote, doctors would use the ring finger when applying treatments, which inspired the term doctor finger, healing finger, heart finger, and a leech finger, the last because leech was another word for physician, unquote. Yikes. Finally, we have the pinky, spelled with a Y or IE at the end, also known as the little finger or digitus minimus manus in medical terms. Pinky comes from Scottish English, originally from the Dutch word pink, meaning little finger. Not a lot is known about its deeper origin, but some etymologists believe that it has to do with the diminutive suffix y, which is used in English for small or cute things. As JSTOR points out, this little guy is the, quote, lovable runt of the hand, unquote. Think about the expression to have someone wrapped around your little finger, which means to be so endearing to someone that they can't resist your wishes or demands. And here's an interesting note. In some languages, the fingers represent family members. In Japanese, for example, little children are taught that the thumb is the father finger, the index finger is the mother finger, the middle finger is the brother finger, the ring finger is the sister finger, and the pinky is the baby finger. And in the Native American Choctaw language, the middle finger is known as the middle son. But wait, there's more. There are several interesting expressions in English that involve the word finger in general. To have your finger on the pulse of something means to be knowledgeable and up-to-date on something. If you put your finger on something, you are discovering something previously unknown or hidden. 
And if someone takes a five-finger discount or has sticky fingers, it means they've stolen or shoplifted something. Isn't it amazing how five little fingers can give us such colorful expressions? Let's stop here before it gets out of hand. That segment was by Susan Herman, a former multidisciplined language analyst, analytic editor, and instructor for the U.S. government. Finally, I have a family story. Hi, Mignon. This is Josh from Spokane, Washington. I have a family story for you. Our child, when they were younger, loved swimming, they love swimming now, um, and was trying to think of what to call the stuff you put on your body to protect you from the sun's rays. And they would often say, um, I need some sunscreen. So now, uh, many years later, everyone in our family still calls it sunscreen. I need some sunscreen, please, as we head to the pool. Thanks so much. Love your podcast and um, love thinking about words with you. Take care. Thanks, Josh. It is definitely that time of year. So I'm happy to hear you're all using your sunscreen. If you want to share the story of your family act, a word your family and only your family uses, call the voicemail line at 833214GIRL. It's in the show notes, and be sure to tell me the story behind your family act because that's always the best part. Grammar Girl is a Quick and Dirty Tips podcast. Thanks to our audio engineer, Nathan Sams, and our director of podcasts, Adam Cecil. Thanks also to our digital operations specialist, Holly Hutchings, our ad operations specialist, Morgan Christensen, and our marketing associate, Davina Tomlin, who's trying and perhaps failing to learn to juggle. And I'm Mignon Fogarty, better known as Grammar Girl. That's all. Thanks for listening.